Having been involved in the provision of specialist solutions for waste management and renewable energy for over 30 years, I know that the planet can no longer afford to use waste disposal systems that recover only a fraction of the valuable resources contained in waste. Neither can we continue to produce massive quantities of potent greenhouse gases from landfills. In the 1960s, I spent two years on Fletcher's ice island T3 at the North Pole. It was one of at least five ice islands estimated to be around 2,000 years old. All are now gone, broken away from the pack ice to float into the North Atlantic and melt. This experience at the North Pole, working with oceanographers, atmospheric scientists and geologists, coupled with a life of substantive experience in construction, agriculture, oceanography, navigation, aviation and blue water sailing, has driven the 17 years work by a dedicated team that is represented in the Global Olivine technology. Global Olivine's collective ambition has been to eliminate the massive impact man's waste has on our planet's environment. To turn waste into a resource and efficiently recover the energy that it inherently represents. To stop using our land and groundwater our oceans and atmosphere as a dump. To stop the unnecessary global warming and resource wastage of our current waste management practices. The majority of the world's waste is dumped into and squandered in landfills, such as these shown in New Zealand. Not only is this wasting a valuable resource, it is having a significant and unnecessary impact on the environment. Landfills like these can be found in most any country in the world. Global Olivine's ambition has been achieved with the only fully integrated zero waste solution in the world today. This is known as the GO Sustainable Resource Recycling Facility, for short, a GO SRRF. This is considered to be the best available technology in the UK where an environmental permit has been issued after thorough scrutiny of the process. A permit has also been issued in West Australia after the same diligence. Zero waste is achieved by integrating up to 19 different industries on one site. By using the byproducts from one process as the raw material for the next, we can completely close the waste stream loop. These established off-the-shelf industries have an integrated symbiotic relationship. They produce useful and saleable products from the recycled waste stream, as well as carbon credits and in some cases predominantly green energy. None of these industries are lockstep or dependent on each other. The blend of waste produced by most Western countries will produce between 65% and 70% green energy. GO has provided a new continuous monitoring process that for the first time can accurately index the non-fossil to fossil fuel ratio regardless of moisture content of the waste, allowing accurate measurement of green energy produced. The plant will handle up to 1,300,000 tonnes of waste which will be composed of municipal solid and industrial waste or MSIW, sewage sludge, dangerous goods, recycled waste oil, recycled glass, recycled metals, whiteware, electrical and electronics equipment, contaminated soils, waste chemicals, biomass crops and residues, hospital waste, veterinary waste, tyres, creosoted railway sleepers and poles, gypsum board recycling, drums of cement stabilised chemicals, recycled plastics, plus the construction debris accepted and recycled at the off-site transfer stations. The SRRF and transfer stations recycle 64% of the dry weight of waste imported, the balance being moisture and CO2 up the chimney from oxidisation of cellulose and carbon. This includes 90% of the construction debris delivered to the transfer stations being recycled at the transfer stations, with the remaining 10% being delivered to the plant for treatment and further recycling. 
The GO SRRF allows for the production of the following useful products. Electricity grows up to 1.3 million megawatt hours per year. Concrete products from ash aggregates, 235,000 tonnes a year. Pozzolanic high-grade cement additive, 7,000 tonnes a year. Recovered ferrous metals into foundry products, 25,000 tonnes a year. Non-ferrous metals, the majority into foundry products, 7,000 tonnes a year. Recovered mercury, 2 tonnes a year. Recovered colloidal sulphur, 3,000 tonnes a year. Recovered hydrochloric acid at 34% concentration, 30,000 tonnes a year. Glass products, of which there are virgin glass made from the vitrifiers, 70,000 tonnes a year. Glass from the community is recycled into foamed, glazed bricks and roofing tiles, 30,000 tonnes a year. Recycled oil product, 15,000 tonnes per annum. The plant, however, has a capacity to handle 90,000 tonnes per annum. Recycled plastic products into PET containers, HDPE containers and mixed plastic made into pallets, up to 30,000 tonnes a year. Residue to landfill? Zero. There is no waste that needs to be sent to a landfill. In other words, this is a truly productive plant with zero waste. The above products are produced with a substantial reduction of energy and raw materials which would be represented in standalone industries producing the same products. For example, one single energy process on site produces five different useful products plus 16 megawatts of surplus power in dual cycle as well as recovering the low-grade waste heats from its various products to heat its feed water. If these products were produced in isolated circumstances, they would require five separate power sources and at best, one industry might produce 11 megawatts of power in single cycle without being able to use the embedded and exothermic waste heats generated in manufacturing the various products. It is in this manner the industrial park becomes a combined heat and power project with a subsequent 31.4% electrical efficiency and a gross thermal efficiency of between 92.9 and 94% fluctuating when an asphalt plant is in use. This reflects the mass energy balances of all of the processes which emit to air through the gasifier, ultra high temperature combustor and high temperature scrubber, then to the two on-site chimneys. The steam from the cooling towers is used for conversion of the back-end steam into condensate. In the event of a country choosing to desalinate water, up to 116,000 tonnes of high-quality fresh water per day can be easily produced by multiple effect desalination in lieu of using cooling towers, with only a small loss of electrical generation from loss of energy at the back end of the turbine rotor. In water short areas, a reverse osmosis plant can be used to modulate power export if required. This water is more expensive and has a lesser quality than MED, but when blended and passed through a calcine bed, produces an excellent potable water supply. The operating hours of the on-site industries are organised where possible to utilise off-peak power during their daily duty periods. The use of low-cost embedded energy for these on-site industries provides a major competitive advantage. None of these industries are lockstep with each other and in most instances the plant is designed with three days of material storage. The plant design accommodates ongoing maintenance without disrupting contracted performance targets. Duplication of functions allows online maintenance of most functions. The maintenance of boilers and bag houses is ongoing as there is a spare of each. They can be replaced in a few hours to allow scheduled or unscheduled maintenance. The power station is an N-1 design which makes power generation extremely reliable and robust. This term in the power industry describes redundancy of equipment to allow maintenance without loss of production. The surplus capacity enabling this feature makes megavar correction and grid support a major feature of the plant. The plant produces up to 1.150 million megawatt hours of power per year for export. However, its own industries can use up to 30% of the power in non-peak times of the day. This power is reticulated on site on a 22 kV private ring main. This ring main may be extended to near neighbours who then benefit from continued power supply in the event of a grid failure, at which point the plant reduces power generation and moves to island mode. Embedded generation minimises line losses with a subsequent contribution to preventing global